Welcome to the Fireside Chats edition. Death State. Death State got its start as part of uh, an office game jam that we did in late uh, 2013. We came up with this idea for what was originally going to be a, a mobile game. So some spooky Lovecraftian themes, teleporting through portals, fighting skeletons, lots of weird magic and such. And we presented it at the end of the jam. It was cool. We, we enjoyed it. A lot of people enjoyed it. Um, but it kept coming back to it. We put a little bit more time into it, leading into uh, PAX East um, 2015. We showed it off there for the first time to the public, and the reception was great. So um, after that, we worked on it full time until we launched in uh, October of 2015. So Death State is a roguelike bullet hell single stick shooter. Um, roguelike in that it is a you don't have you don't have lives in the game, so in any time that you play, it's going to give you like a procedural shuffle. So it will never be exactly the same uh, playing it two times in a row or any times in a row, essentially. You auto fight at the closest enemy to you, which kind of took out that element of coordination and let it be more about um, movement, dodging, and positioning um, while still being able to deal damage the entire time. It kind of combines a bunch of different genres that. Um, we enjoy, we like playing, and we think it's something kind of unique that maybe you haven't seen all these elements put together in the way they're put together in Death State before. The items in Death State have some interesting levels or just, just, just weird concepts behind them. Weird old relics, you know, weird, you know, haunted teeth stuff that's kind of, it gets a little bit like reliquary as far as, you know, there's a couple you know, deceased saints things, old spell books, organs, uh, magic items, idols, you know, strange gems and things. We wanted to try and really pile on as much weird kind of steeped in mysterious history stuff as we could. You'll find things like relics or books or weapons which will kind of uh, do different um, attacks for you. You'll also find organs which are um, kind of the method which your stats increase. You get more hit points, deal more damage, um, maybe um, you know buff a certain build, like you find an ice staff, it shoots ice bullets, but you find an organ that improves your ice damage, and then you've kind of got some synergy going and you can kind of um, have a kind of a unique build that way. They all need to have unique effects that still synergize with other items and tie into the way that they look as well. For example, runes and masks sort of have similar effects in their groups but um, you know, each of them sort of has their own flavor as well. The visual design of Death State, uh, very occulty, very mysterious, but also still kind of distilled through sort of a technological lens. It's not, it's not, it's, you're still playing the game on a screen, uh, and there's a little bit of, I guess there's a little bit of like harkening back to say, you know, old media, as far as, you know, imagining playing this game on like an old bad TV or something, or something like the old weird, VHS effects quality. So enemy characters in Death State, uh, the actual production of those, we try to keep pretty simple. I think if you actually paid attention to most enemies, they're all single direction facing, and the majority of them have maybe five frames, so like a simple walk and maybe a death or two. Some of them have a few extra things like an attack pose, or I think it's the flying enemies that have real significant animation because they'll have like a full, you know, maybe 10 or 12 frame cycle for flapping their wings and then also they don't leave a corpse on the ground when they die so they have to fully kind of disintegrate into, you know, into nothingness I guess. A lot of development time goes into um, setting up the bosses. Um, they, actually, they obviously have a lot more AI than your average enemy. They're going to be moving around, have different phases. Um, attacks are going to change as they get a certain health threshold, stuff like that. I mostly developed boss behaviors, and to me the most interesting thing about them was trying to figure out a series of, of um, phases that would go together in an interesting way and could scale from Desecration Zero, which was easy, all the way up to Desecration Three or Insanity, where they had to just fill the screen with bullets. They're gory, they're fun, they've got really lurid death animations with a lot of animation frames applied to them compared to other stuff that happens in the game. So the bosses are really where we put like the most individual production hours just in kind of making those C 
seem like the real the real capstones of this is the end of your level, this is the end of your run, fight something big, awesome, and cool, and you know, watch it skin melt off. The final boss is interesting because he's intended to be a very pure bullet hell fight. Uh, the game is, you know, it's kind of spiritually a bullet hell, but in a lot of ways it deviates, and we wanted the final boss to be something that is just like a classic bullet hell fight with waves of confusing bullets all over the screen, uh, and he was designed to be just like that. So the inspiration for the music, I'd say, comes from uh, a lot of different sources. Uh, of course, retro gaming sources, there's a lot of uh, sort of Sega-inspired uh, Echo the Dolphin, uh, Streets of Rage, and um, Castlevania as well is a big uh, factor. Uh, as well, there's a lot of uh, horror movie uh, soundtracks, the like Goblin soundtracks, and um, even contemporary sources uh, as electronic, uh, progressive rock, and, and metal, I think, all, all come into it. When we were making the music, we were going for the concept of a sound blaster-like quality, so aping that sort of thing. Uh, while also trying to move slightly beyond it, we threw in some other uh, modern effects on top of that sometimes, but not all the time. Uh, and it was really difficult to make a genre kind of music out of these beeps and boops, because, uh, for instance, if you tried to make something like we did uh, that sounds kind of, you know, metal, and then you you make it out of beeps and boops, it doesn't sound like metal. It sounds like beeps and boops. I guess what we put together would be like the horror chip tune, if that's a genre, uh, which it might be. Yeah, we had a lot of ideas for Death State that. Um just for time and just so we could launch it, we had to put it on the back burner. But uh, we got a few things that might be coming here in 2016, like um, different modes of play. We're planning on adding maybe something like an endless mode where you kind of see how deep you can go before um, you're overwhelmed. Some additional character skins, they may be cosmetic, but at least they're there for a reward for people that have been playing and get to have a few more unlocks and things, a little more visual customization. Originally, we were going to have an additional gameplay item slot with you know a little bat or a demon or somebody that would fly around and float around after you and maybe they would fly off and do something or maybe they would just be around and give you you know a really strong buff. The Destiny community has been great. We've gotten a lot of valuable feedback on the Steam forums, um, people directly messaging us on Twitter. Um, a lot of the things we've added and tweaked in the game have been based on um, requests or comments, feedback, um, both positive and negative from people playing the game. Um, it's been really, really wonderful, and um, we um, look forward to continuing and growing the community and uh, seeing more people play Death State.